Hi, this is Kathy Colossus, Professor Emeritus and Registered Nutritionist and Dietitian from the Brody School of Medicine. This is segment two of Other Approaches to Weight Management, Special Foods, Supplements, Drugs, Surgery, and More, uh, recorded in December 2014. This segment includes some information about dietary supplements for diabetes management, sugar substitutes, glycemic index, meal replacements for weight management, and low-calorie diet. As you can see in this slide, most people with type 2 diabetes are encouraged to lose weight. And there are some supplements like chromium and cinnamon that are promoted to people with diabetes. Alpha-lipoic acid does not contribute to weight loss, but can reduce the pain and tingling in fingers and toes. If a dietary supplement actually improves insulin sensitivity, indirectly the patient or the person that you're working with could have some weight loss or at least slow their weight gain. Chromium picolinate is often packaged with a low calorie diet plan. Following that plan, diet plan may lead to greater benefits than actually taking the supplement. People like to use alternatives to sugar to manage their weight as well as their blood sugar. Some sugar substitutes like saccharin have, not, have no calories because they are not burned for energy in the body cells. There are artificial sweeteners and also, um, there are artificial sweeteners that include acyl sulfame, potassium, advantane, aspartame, neotame, and sucralose. Some substitutes like aspartame and stevia are so intensely sweet that it takes just a teeny amount to sweeten food, and that makes them essentially calorie-free. Monk fruit and stevia leaf extracts are considered to be natural high-potency sweeteners. Some, like sugar alcohols, have fewer calories than sugar because they are not absorbed in the intestinal tract. They include erythritol, hydrogenated starch hydrosylate, known as HSH, isomalt, lactitol, malitol, mannitol, sorbitol, and xylitol. Most sugar substitutes are actually foods and carry the nutrition facts label. In this slide, you see the familiar pink bag for saccharin, blue bag for aspartame, and yellow bag for sucralose or Splenda. There are also lots of mixtures available. And I might mention that as the mixtures uh, grow, you're going to find that these color scheme of pink, blue, and yellow are not uh, necessarily consistent. So, so when somebody tells you that they're taking the pink sweetener, you may need to uh, pursue that a little bit more than you did in the past when we used to think that pink meant sweet and low. There continue to be some lingering concerns about the safety of saccharin, which is 350 times sweeter than sugar. And there's some concerns about aspartame, which is 200 times sweeter than sugar. One packet sweetens like two teaspoons of sugar with no calories and less than a gram of carbohydrate. While these have been found to be safe, and when they do replace caloric sweeteners, they can lead to weight loss. The final product on this slide is a product that contains stevia, but it carries the supplement facts label. Only products that use highly purified stevia leaf extract, like those in the slide that's coming up, can be labeled as a food. If it has only a supplement facts label on it, uh, we aren't as confident about the safety of the product. There are concerns that crude stevia extracts could have a potential negative impact on blood sugar, sperm count, kidney function, and cardiovascular system. So when you're talking with your participants, remember that they should purchase products that carry a nutrition facts label, which are subject to safety regulations. Products with supplement facts labels may not be regulated for safety nor for effectiveness. This slide shows three stevia or Reb A based sweeteners. They have nutrition facts labels and therefore are known to be safe. Some stevia products have additional ingredients like erythritol, isomalt, and natural flavors. Some products include cellulose powders or inulins to suggest that they have added benefit of healthy fibers. It may include an ingredient like silica to give it glowing characteristics. Uh, these 
provides zero calories and zero carbs. Stevia comes in both powder and liquid form. It is 200 to 300 times sweeter than sugar. One packet, about one gram, has the sweetness of two teaspoons of sugar. There seems to be an increasing number of combo products out there. For example, Sun Crystals combine stevia and pure cane sugar, providing five calories and one gram of carbohydrate. Pure via raw cane sugar and stevia blend have the same sweetness as one teaspoon of raw cane sugar and seven calories, compared to 18 calories in a turbinado sugar or raw cane sugar. Erythritol is a sugar alcohol. Uh, when sugar alcohol is found in sugar-free products and diabetic candies and cookies is consumed in large quantities, it can cause GI distress like bloating and even potentially diarrhea. It does provide sweetness, but it importantly provides bulking in appearance textures. Pictured in this slide are some of the newer sweeteners. It's important to read the ingredient labels of products labeled as monk fruit. The products vary a great deal in both the ingredients and in price. The sweet compounds known as mogricides are extracted from the fruit grown in China called luau hongguo or monk fruit in English. They are about 200 times sweeter than sugar. And for example, one packet of monk fruit in the raw is about a quarter teaspoon and it has zero calories and is as sweet as two teaspoons of sugar or 32 calories. It is assumed to be safe, but has not been tested for safety in animals as are sugar substitutes. The manufacturers say that they are natural because the compounds are also found in grapes, pears, mushrooms, soy sauce, and wine. The products may have other ingredients like erythritol, which we just saw in the stevia products to provide bulk. Advantame is a chemical cousin of aspartame and neotame that is 20,000 times sweeter than table sugar. It was approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 2014. The additive is so sweet that only teeny amounts are needed to be added to food to sweeten it. Agave nectar was very popular in the last few years, and just like honey, molasses, and fruit juice concentrates, it's considered to be a natural sweetener. In food products, they might be referred to as added sugars. There is no evidence that they are better for your health than regular sugar. And the bottom line caution is they needed to be treated similarly to sugars. There are some people trying to follow a low glycemic index diet, a low GI as it's called, and agave is promoted as having a lower GI. So agave is 19, fructose is 23, sucrose is 84. But remember, however, that the GI of a product changes depending on what foods it's eaten with or what it's combined with. There is some concern that individuals who take in too much fructose compared with glucose might also overwhelm their body's ability to deal with it and cause a fructose intolerance. The bottom line is keep to a minimum the use of all caloric sweeteners if you're trying to manage your weight. This slide is an example of how the grocery store shelves keep changing. For example, to appeal to those who are looking for a natural product, that is environmentally friendly, I recently saw these Florida organic crystals. It is sugar. It contains 15 calories per teaspoon. I also found in the Food Lion store a sugar substitute. I thought because of its pink box, it was probably saccharin. But a closer look at the ingredient list found that it was dextrose was the first ingredient. Dextrose is a sugar that contributes calories, but it must be present in only small amounts in this product and needs not be labeled as a calorie source. 
when I first started in nutrition, there were only sugar, either from sugar cane or sugar beet, and saccharin. Although saccharin was shown to have possibly caused bladder cancer in rats, the Food and Drug Administration allowed it to remain for sale because there were no alternatives. Today, there are many alternatives. And I tell my patients to select the type of sweetener that meets their personal health and weight goals, provides a pleasing taste to them, is affordable, and meets any of their other goals. If using a calorie sweetener, they should use as little as possible. If you're using sugar alternatives for weight control, what you need to know is that sugar substitutes do not appear to cause weight gain in themselves. There have been some reports in the media that, that that's the case, but there really is no evidence that they do that. Sugar substitutes range from zero to four calories per gram, remembering that a teaspoon of sugar is one gram or 16 calories. So there's some calorie savings, but if you're only sweetening a, a cup of coffee or a glass of tea, sugar might just be fine. Studies do suggest that individuals who are overweight adhere to their weight loss plans when they switch from sugar sweetened drinks to low calorie drinks, better than if they switch to water long term. So it, it may be important for your participants to find or make drinks with a sugar substitute. Claims of all natural, non-GMO, organic are not relevant to the weight loss properties of the sugar substitute. So while they may be important to an individual to select those for those characteristics, it really isn't important in terms of weight loss. So should a person involved in the Eat Smart, Move More, Way Less program use alternatives to sugar? It depends on the consumption of caloric sweeteners. If your participant really only uses a little bit, they might only be saving 16 calories. But if they drink soda all day long, they could save a lot of calories by drinking a diet drink. As your participants make their decisions, let them know that they have been studies that suggest that sugar substitutes may affect brain in ways that cause weight gain. But as I already mentioned, there's no evidence that that really is true. Although there is evidence that if a person thinks they are saving calories by using diet products, they might still consume more calories than they expect. In that way, using sugar substitutes could contribute to weight gain. Researchers conducting the CHOICE study here in North Carolina compared the replacement of caloric beverages with water or diet beverages as a method of weight loss. They concluded that the diet beverage group reported a greater reduction in caloric beverage intake at both three and six months compared to the water group. This suggests that some individuals may adhere better to a replacement of their sugar sweetened beverage with a diet beverage rather than with water. This slide depicts the glycemic index pyramid. It is a rather difficult and tedious diet to follow. I typically tell individuals to follow a whole foods diet, uh, like approach like a Mediterranean diet, and they would be coming closer to following a low GI diet. So eating the food is in as rare of a raw as you might have it or unprocessed as you might have it would be coming close to eating a low GI diet. I have to mention that the current trend to eat gluten-free diets for weight loss can be a trap. If a person follows the original gluten-free diets, which were full of lean meats, fish, fruits, vegetables, pretty much in their whole state, they might have lost weight because the diet had fewer calories than they were eating before. But as this slide depicts, processed gluten-free products often have added fats and sugars to make them more palatable. This gluten-free waffle, gluten waffle has 230 calories compared with a frozen waffle of 190 calories. Hamburger buns are even higher in calories than their gluten-containing um, uh, counterparts. A gluten-free hamburger bun has 330 calories compared with 120 calories in a regular hamburger bun. And they may cost twice as much money. 
doses, their new trends in dietary supplements, new weight loss theories and diets are introduced all the time. Many of them require extensive dietary supplementation. Again, you can't be expected to know all about all of them. In this example is the ultra metab metabolism diet. It's pretty typical. It's written and promoted by a physician. There are no published data to support his views, although he makes great claims of successes with the patients that he has seen in his clinic. In 2011, a Duke University physician published the new Atkins for You. His diet is low carb, meaning that it has less than 30% of its calories from carbohydrates, and is high in fat. He claims his patients have greater satiety, so they actually eat less. He also says most of his patients do not experience any increased risk in cardiovascular health. Dr. Westman has been a co-investigator studying low-carb diets for many, many years. This diet, however, is not consistent with the dietary guidelines, and therefore we don't promote it in Eat Smart, Move More, Way Less. But this is um, what we actually know, is that there is no one best diet for every person who is going to lose weight. Some people like to use meal replacements, uh, and they typically have been approved as products that carry a nutrition facts label. They're used in place of food. They come in liquid and solid forms, and there are good data that demonstrate individuals who replace high-calorie foods with these can lose weight. So a health-promoting meal replacement product could be between 200 and 400 calories, have at least three to five grams of dietary fat, 10 grams of protein, and will have less than four grams of saturated fat, no trans fats, and less than 750 milligrams of sodium. There are many companies offering these prepackaged meals delivered to a person's home to manage weight, diabetes, and other conditions. If they are used at the appropriate calorie level and in place of foods and beverages, a person could be expected to lose weight. A person following these might want to to analyze their diet, however, to make sure they're getting appropriate nutrients to support the rest of their nutritional health. For individuals who use meal replacements, there's evidence that replacing two meals per day for 12 weeks is a safe and effective plan, and, that, and to make sure that they're getting enough of the other nutrients and dietary fiber, they probably should make sure they're eating all the fruits and vegetables that are required. Some of these products and diets are being advertised as composed of low glycemic index foods. While there's a great deal of interest in understanding the way different individuals respond to different types of carbohydrates, the, glow, the low glycemic approach is yet to be proven as a way to manage weight for diabetes. As mentioned earlier, there are risks, risks in following a low glycemic diet, including I'm sorry. As mentioned earlier, there are a few risks involved. There are few risks in following a low glycemic diet, except for the time and resources needed to plan meals and snacks, and the benefits are unclear. There is good evidence that very low calorie diets or liquid fast can lead to substantial weight loss. At one time, these products were only available in medically managed programs, but now some of the products are available for home delivery. If an individual uses these products and consumes fewer than 800 calories a day, they really should be monitored by a physician for any dangerous side effects like electrolyte imbalance. In programs that use a liquid, full liquid fast, food is slowly reintroduced clients learn to eat appropriately. They are effective if an individual learns to understand their hunger and eat appropriately throughout that program. You might find individuals selling these programs or products call themselves weight loss coaches or health coaches. The nutrition and medical training and knowledge of these individuals vary greatly. The use of meal replacements as part of 1,000 to 1,500 calorie diet may be as effective and less expensive than a very low calorie diet. So 
modified plans do work for some individuals. This slide lists the characteristics of an individual who might benefit from a very low calorie diet approach to weight loss. Their body mass index was greater than 30. They're over 21 years of age. They have a history of unsuccessful weight loss in the past. They want to see faster weight loss than by diet and exercise alone. They need to break bad eating habits. They're willing to give up food for 12 to 18 weeks while they lose a significant amount of weight. They're willing to relearn how to eat healthy for continued weight loss or weight maintenance after the program. They're able to come to a weekly education or medical session. They can afford the program because these are really quite expensive. They're ready to make a commitment and they need to lose weight uh, because they are not necessarily a candidate for surgery, but medically need to lose weight. This slide shows the elements of a typical program. Programs cite research studies that show about 50 pound weight loss over 18 weeks. These programs require, as I've mentioned, resources of time and money. The sustainability of that weight loss is really dependent on the individual learning to eat appropriately, and finding the appropriate support. Eat Smart Move More Away Less could be that support. Data are unclear on the long-term benefits of rapid versus slow weight loss. Uh, we used to really caution against rapid weight loss, but the data don't really support that that's as detrimental for most people as we had originally thought. Our Way Less program can be, as I've mentioned, an appropriate support mechanism for individuals once they've completed one of these types of programs. While there are published studies about the effectiveness of programs like Optifast, Metafast, HMR, there are other programs um, where the data are not in the public domain. They are products that are being offered in networks of physician offices who promote themselves as weight loss offices. Individuals interested in those programs should really ask the office about the products in detail. Uh, some offices are offering HCG injections along with the diet and the dietary supplements or the food replacements. And although testimonials speak to large immediate weight loss, uh, it is not clear uh, what really is happening. The authoritative medical letter says there are no published data to support the use of HCG along with these type of other meal replacement programs. 